Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am here by myself. I'm going to do a couple of videos here. Um, Neon is busy. It's not because he's not interested. It's because he literally is working on one of our other businesses today, so he cannot be here. It is just me. We are going to talk about the Little Mermaid box office. Uh, we have estimates about what the weekend's going to do, what the four day weekend's going to do. It's coming in around where they said, they said four days, 110 to 130, and it looks like it's going to end up in that range. Um, the media is all running with it. Oh, it's the win, win, win. You know, it's the biggest ever, you know, it's, oh, it's the fourth highest opening for, you know, a live action film, which is not necessarily the truth. We're going to look at that. It's still doing pretty, pretty good. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see next weekend to see how the drop off is. If it has a small drop off, then it probably can go on to do really, really well. And we talked before it needs to do really well because we know the marketing on this thing has been ginormous. Some outlets are printing 80 million. I know it has to be more than that because I know 10 million of it was just for that Oscar spot. It's got to be more than 80 million. Um, in marketing expenses. We know that they're letting other things like uh, Elemental kind of flounder, no pun intended, and fail because they're spending all their money on this film. And this has to succeed for a narrative of nothing else. But um, we're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at some of the Rotten Tomato weirdness and other outlets are claiming overseas it's being review bombed because, you know, it's always review bombed when it isn't, you know, glowing praise, but it's never review bombed, you know, the other way when it's like, you know, so there's so, five stars all over and there's some weirdness with the verified audience score we're going to talk about too. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. Um, Woohoo for those who do. I appreciate it. Um, now we're going to talk about this. So I did an article on Pirates and Princesses talking about the holiday weekend opening. Now, a lot of the opening totals that we have when you have like this franchise um, box office mojo, the different ones that have opened, they only have domestic for one. Two, there are three day openings, okay? So Aladdin showing 91.5, that was for three days, not four. And a lot of them, if you have to compare, you know, the totals, you're gonna wanna compare the three day to three day to make it apples to apples. Other, otherwise, it's just, you know, narrative. So they're going on, it's going to make probably between, oh, there's me with my purse that I, I adore. It's going to make between 110 to 130 million was the estimate. They think it's going to be 118 to 120 domestic um, for the four days. Okay, for three days, it's going to do about 95.5, which is good. That's about, you know, 5 million more than what Aladdin did, but they're pretty close. I mean, that's not a lot of difference. The problem The Little Mermaid is having is globally, it is not doing well. It's not coming in the numbers they, they thought it would. It's only 68.3 million. That's what they're accusing a lot of people of review bombing it um, because maybe it's just because people don't want to watch it. But no, no, it's got to always be some kind of conspiracy. But then they make fun of everybody else about conspiracy theories. Um, domestically, it did 95.5 and it's saying, uh, so globally, they're saying the three day total should be about 163.8 million. Um, if you're gonna, you know, figure 100 and we'll figure 120 million, and then it's going to be like, probably it's not going to even hit 200 million, or if it does, it's just going to barely hit 200 million for four days. Cause remember it's a holiday here. It doesn't mean it's a holiday replace else. So the numbers might not change that much globally. It'll be like a Monday for everybody else. Um, but when you compare that, they're, they're all like, oh, it's winning. If you go out here, they're all talking about the box office. You know, The Little Mermaid dominates, 118 million debut. There, this one here is like, it's the fourth highest Disney live action. No. it Well, from a certain point of view, which we're going to look at in a minute. Toss Weekend box office. Um, this one says, fails to make a ripple. It depends what you ask. But most of them are, oh, my God, it's amazing. It's kicking ass. You know, it's one of the best. It's the bestest ever type thing. Here's where it gets me when they're saying about, well, it's the biggest or fourth biggest. It's not really. It is if you go by domestic only and barely if you compare three day to three day. OK. If you look at the numbers and you consider global, Aladdin did 212 million uh, for its three day total and 234.7 million for four days, including the global uh, totals. That's not going to come. That's not going to beat that. It's just not. Um, and again, The Little Mermaid four day might look better than other totals, but it's going to have to be compared to 
their three day total is what you have to compare it with because three day to three day. It's not going to come anywhere near a 95 million. It's not going to come anywhere near the Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, or the Lion King uh, for three day totals. It does beat Aladdin. Uh, domestically, but not globally. So it is the fourth highest grossing reimagining in the U.S. domestically or over here, not globally, okay? You have to take that into consideration. Um, But it's not doing terrible. I'm not going to say it is when it isn't. I'm hearing mixed things about reviews, though. Some people say, oh, it's either you love it or you hate it, it seems. Uh, Everybody's like, it's the bestest thing ever, or I don't like it. I'm, I'm hearing more good than bad, truth be told. I think it's going to be an okay. It's a well done reimagining. I don't think it's the best one they've ever done. But you know, I don't think it's terrible either. And I'm not going to say it is just because of narrative either. But we're hearing different things. What's weird is if what's weird is if you go out to Rotten Tomatoes, okay, and everybody's like Rotten Tomatoes says, What's strange is on Rotten Tomatoes, they have these scores here, okay? You have your critical score and your audience score. What is strange is this audience score is 95%. It has not changed. And that's what's weird because we're talking the verified audience score are people supposedly have provable tickets. And a lot of times you can't even get in there even if you have provable tickets, so you have to put it in all audiences. But Disney could have a lot of proven tickets, I'm just saying, but it never changes from 95. And they're like, well, the higher, the, the, the more reviews they get, the harder it is to change that number. That is true, except this number's been there since the reviews first started coming in, when there was hardly any reviews, and it should have been easily changed. Meanwhile, if you click on it and you go to all audiences, it's 54. It has been going up. It was 47 a couple days ago or yesterday. I forget. It all blends together. But it's been fluctuating as it should. It should be going up and down and changing. That would indicate that people are, you know, giving their opinions and it's balancing out. That you expect. You're not seeing that here. And you want to hear something else that's weird? Do you know where Aladdin sat for the longest time too when it came out? 95%. Moving forward, I'll have to start watching these live action um, reimaginings to see if they sit at 95% because the last one with Aladdin did too. All right. So you go out to critical score, it's 67%. Um, If you go to, to Top critic, it's only 47%. But these have changed. This number has gone up and down. All critics has gone up and down. They have moved. They they prove that they're living and changing and evolving as they go, just like all audience score does. But verified audience has sat the same, unmoving the entire time. Right there is where I have questions. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. This isn't even about whether the movie is good or bad. It's about the fact that here's another Disney film on Rotten Tomatoes that has some questionable things going on. While they're all out there worrying about how, oh, the Little Mermaid's getting a review bombed. They're talking about here in Deadline. Something's fishy overseas because it's not doing well overseas. And they're saying that in France, Little Mermaid launched on Wednesday. And then one of the outlets was like, we are currently observing an unusual distribution of scores, which demands a need for caution. How come? Why now? Why the Little Mermaid? Is there you going to try and say everybody's racist? We encourage you to make up your own mind about the film, which I agree with that. Make up your own mind. Don't listen to anybody what they say. You might love it. You might hate it. Make up your own mind. But if you don't want to pay to see it, just wait till it comes to Disney Plus, you know, or other way. Don't pirate it. But there are other ways you can see it later on. You don't have to pay for it now. Um, we're not unprecedented. This is a rare move. To be fair, critics at some respected outlets did not like the movie giving it one star. Are are, are they terrible people too? Are they review bombing it? Because I always love how critics can can give it whatever. But if audiences do, then audiences are terrible people. But IMDB says, our ratings mechanism detected unusual voting activity on this title. Bullshit. I mean, well, I think that people are going in and voting things up and down unfairly. Okay. I have not made any, you know, excuses or said anything to the contrary the whole time. I guarantee you on Rotten Tomatoes, we keep seeing it all the time. There is a concerted effort for different groups, one to vote it down, one to vote it up. It's been happening for years. We've mentioned it time and time again with these movies. So yes, I completely believe that there are some unusual activity going on. I just think it's funny that they're mentioning it now because I've seen it for several different movies, but our ratings mechanism has detected unusual voting activity on this title to preserve the reliability of our rating system. An alternate weighting calculation has been applied. 
that probably you know favors the movie. I'm sure Disney probably spent a lot of money for that. IMDb says it publishes weighted vote averages rather than raw data averages. Although we accept and consider all votes received by users, not all votes have the same impact or weight on the final rating. Yeah, that's... Mm -mm. When unusual voting activity is detected, an alternative, alternate weighting calculation may be implied in order to preserve the reliability of our system. Okay, well, what's the unusual voting activity? What, a lot of people have opinions on it? So you, you, you're, it's unusual voting activity? Let me guess. All the five stars are accurate and all the one stars or less are, are, are unusual voting activity? Uh, we just keep seeing this over and over again. They're talking about different countries. I know China is not, it's not the one on China. Um, Korea. Their news reported that heading into the weekend, the film was been subject of rating terrorism. So apparently, um, apparently there is an issue, but a backlash against Black Mermaid. But of course, it's not because it's all because of racism. It's never because of any other reason. I mean, you'd think they at least try to get a little more creative with their reasoning because not everybody in the world hates Black people. I mean, some countries I can see it over others, but the the, the I, I was literally on boards, okay, on these Disney boards, and there were a lot of pixie dusters on there, which I, I mentioned a lot of them actually didn't like the movie or thought it was eh. But as soon as you had any criticism of the film, as soon as, like, if you put a laughing emoji or anything that didn't, like, agree that it was the, with the ridiculously over-the-top barf-inducing glowing praise from these people, you're automatically, well, you're just a racist. No, I'm not a racist. Thank you. I mean, I wasn't the one commenting. I think they're allowed to have their opinion of the movie. If they love it, that's cool. I'm happy that they do. I might go and love it too. I don't know yet. I, 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 if I do go and see it and I like it, I'll tell you so. But you're allowed to like it. You're allowed to not like it. You're allowed to have your opinion. But your opinion does not automatically make you you know, insert insult here. Um, it doesn't make you an istophobe. Now, if you're out there saying you hate the movie because you don't like black people, then yes, you probably are a racist. Okay. But if you're just saying, I don't like the movie because I didn't, didn't like, you know, the way they portrayed this or that with, you know, compared to the original, I didn't like, you know, flounder or scuttle. I didn't like, you know, I liked Ariel before with her hair flowing in the water better. I liked her with more red hair or something like that. It does not make you a racist. Not because basically that's just an excuse, a lazy, a lazy excuse to dismiss people by like by trying to make them a bad person so you don't have to listen to their opinion. So you are always correct. And it's absolute garbage. I always try to turn it back on them because the person that was saying that I said, well, people saying they don't like it doesn't make them any more racist than you disagreeing with me makes you a misogynist because they were a man. And I was a woman. Do I think they're misogynist? No, but I, I'm just trying to prove a point. You know, I use that sometimes when I'm trying to make a point to them, like just because you disagree with me doesn't make you a misogynist any more than makes somebody else a racist. It's just stupid. But apparently uh, Korea's outlet was reporting that they thought in their case, it was being ridiculed ratings drop day one. Um, they're talking about how Naver said that there have been trend of negative reviews. So apparently it's a global epidemic now that everyone in the world just hates Little Mermaid because she's black. So apparently it's a global racism thing now, as opposed to just a, a United States racism thing, according to the media. China was a disaster. Is anybody surprised? Is anybody surprised it was a disaster in China? There is no audience score on their version of basically Google. Unusual for a film already released for several days. The box office for Sunday is a dismal 2.5 million. And they're expecting the full run to be about 4 million. The other of top five markets the movie opened to was Mexico at 8.5 million, UK at 6.3 million. Not great, but I guess they're, they're, they're a lot smaller in the United States. Italy at 4.7 million, Brazil 4 million, and Australia 4 million. So those are the countries where they're not racist, apparently. But every other country in the world is, is racist people that are just trolls. Um, I mean, I know that's not what they're saying, but I'm like, that's going to be what the narrative is. Because whatever is the most ridiculous, dismissive, laziest bullshit way they can dismiss people is what they're going to do because you literally didn't agree with me. So you, uh, what, what's you're an alt-right Yahtzee. You're a racist. You're, you know, start the list sexist. You hate women. You're misogynist. Let's go on the list. I mean, if it was a white woman that's playing Ariel, that would be their excuse. You're a misogynist. So the whole thing is just, is just, it is what it is. It's going to do well. I think we'll see this week. We'll see what happens next week. That's what we want to watch because 
if it has a low drop off, then that means it could go on to do really well. Um, if it has a, a big drop off, that's not good. Um, but globally, they can't depend on that for this film like they, they are depending on domestic market. And a lot of the films that hit the big numbers did so because they had the global market. It did well in countries like China or the ones they pander to all the time. So props to Disney, though, for not folding and pandering on this. I mean, I'll give them that. But um, we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, please like and subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can tell my kick setting. Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's, it's bringing the decibels. Down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.